The Way Huge Aquapus is without a doubt one of the most essential John Mayer pedals. It's been a staple of his rig from 2004 up until present day. It's been a part of every major rig and board that John has ever built and used. And I recently got my Mark I Aquapus. I'm sure a lot of you guys know if you follow me on Instagram, stuff like that. And it kind of got me thinking of Going down the rabbit hole in terms of the exact timeline, certain performances that John would switch to different versions of the Octopus over essentially since 2004 to present day. So on today's episode, I'm gonna go over John Mayer's entire Octopus history. I just adore this pedal and I'm gonna have fun with this one and just break down the entire timeline of the essential slapback delay that's part of John's sound that we love. So let's get into today's video. Now, before we get into the exact timeline here, guys, I quickly want to discuss the Mark I Octopus and a little bit of information that is gonna help you guys understand what I'm talking about during the actual timeline portion. Now, the Mark I Octopus was hand-built by George Tripps himself in the 1990s. This is before Dunlop started reissuing them. There are only 349 of these pedals ever made. Now, the main point here is that there are actually two versions of the Mark I Octopus. You have the AP-1 and then the AP-2, which is the version I have here. According to George Tripps and Way Huge, there are about 100 AP-1s ever made, meaning that there's about 240 AP-2s in existence. Now, this is important because if you look at the knob layout, and you guys will be seeing a screenshot here from Way Huge themselves, comparing an AP-1 and AP-2, the layout is totally different, and on the AP-1, the blend pot is actually reversed. It goes counterclockwise. And that's just important because when trying to identify what version of the Mark I John is using, you can tell by his settings because it's either gonna be one of two things and that'll easily discern whether it's an AP1 or AP2. So even if we don't get a clear shot of the pedal itself, just based on the settings, we will be able to tell whether it's an AP1 or AP2. And the last thing I'll say here for the Mark I Octopus is that two other tells of whether it's a Mark I or a Mark II is that the Mark I's have a green LED, the Mark II's have a blue LED, and also the power jack on the back on the Mark I's is circular and protrudes more out, whereas they are square on the Mark II, and that's another tell to discern whether it's a Mark I or Mark II, just based on even the back shot of the pedal or the LED. So with that all out of the way, we are going to start the timeline and we actually start with the AP2, this version right here. So we start off with the John Mayer Trio and John used the AP2. And of course you guys will know if I refer to the Octopus as AP1 or AP2, I'm just referring to a specific Mark I version. So unfortunately the heavier things era, we don't have a lot of information on what John was using in that rack unit. As far as I'm aware, no pictures exist. So he might have started using it into 2004 and a little bit of the heavier things era, it's a, it's a possibility. But for certain we can say that he started using it in 2005 with the John Mayer Trio. This was the Octopus version that he used. And we know that the Trio board is the foundation of the whole Continuum era. And if you actually watch the making of in repair video that's on YouTube, I'll link it in the description below, you can see on this uh, table he has with a ton of awesome other vintage way huge pedals don't get me started on his collection he has two ap2s even seen on the board there and you can see him using it on a board during um there's another video from the making of continuum you can see it as part of the trio board in the studio and of course the ap2 was used during the continuum tour it found itself in the rack unit though because john switched from the traditional pedal board like during the trail and back to a bradshaw unit so the ap2 was in the rack during the continuum tour but this is where i discovered something pretty interesting we know that john mayer likes to have a and b rigs during tours for example the a rig is the primary rack unit the primary world tour pedal board the b rig is used for one-off performances maybe some tv promotional stuff or guest appearances stuff like that and john actually had a B unit like this for the Saw Rock era, which I'm going to be discussing in a future video. So hit subscribe if you guys want to be notified when that video is coming out. It's pretty interesting actually diving into John's A and B rigs. But I was looking at the shot here of John performing on stage on the Today Show in 2006, and he has a trio pedal board in front of him. That was kind of like the B rig for the Continuum era. But the octopus that he's using is an AP1. 
And I don't think any of us were really aware that he was using an AP1 this early on. You can tell from the way the pedal is set and even just the markings around that blend knob definitely look like it's going counterclockwise. So I'm pretty damn sure that's an AP1 we were looking at, meaning that the AP2 was in the rack unit for the actual tour, and then he had an AP1 on the B rig. That's just a really interesting piece of information that as far as I'm aware, we had no idea he even was doing. Yes, I'm a giant nerd for the Aquabus, what can I say? Um, so of course the Continuum Tour and where the light is included used an AP2 Aquabus. And then we also move on to the Battle Studies era and John continued to use the AP2 edition of the Mark I Aquabus. Now, one thing I have to note with John's AP2 is that at some point during the Continuum era, it got a low mark label across the pedal. I really don't, know what that means to be quite honest. Um, I was talking with my friend Ryan Colglin a while back actually about this and I believe he says something along the lines of maybe it was repaired by that company and they just put a sticker on it. Uh, I'd be kind of mad if someone put a sticker across my vintage valuable pedal like that. But anyways the low mark label is just on his AP2 and it's another way to discern going forward the AP2 versus the AP1 although I'm sure John owns multiples of each. As for some other kind of awesome and noteworthy performances, in 2009, when the John Mayer Trail reunited, John was using an AP2 Aquapus, as well as for California Dreaming on Conan, that's an incredible performance as well. There was an AP2 that was part of John's rig for that performance. But now we move on to the Born and Raised in Paradise Valley era, and this is where John switched to the AP1 version full time. The AP1 was used for Born and Raised in the Paradise Valley Tour, but I also kind of discovered that John didn't totally ditch the AP2 as it kind of seemed he had done. In 2013, for Albert King's introduction to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, John used an AP2, and also for Don't Let Me Down with Keith Urban, John used an AP2. Now this is purely just based on settings here. It is possible he adjusted them. But for him to all of a sudden change the settings and how he's always used the pedal doesn't really make sense to me. So my money is on this is an AP2 that we are seeing. It's just the most likely option is that he threw together a board and put an AP2 on it for these performances. But going back to the AP1, it was featured with Dead & Company in 2015, 16, and 2018. It was also the pedal that was on the 2019 World Tour pedal board as well as the Saw Rock pedal board that we just saw. And that rounds off the AP1 Aquapus. Now, at this point, we've pretty much covered the entire timeline, and the Mark I Aquapus has definitely been John Mayer's pedal of choice in terms of all the different versions of the Aquapus that exists. Whether an AP1 or AP2, that definitely is his go-to. But John has used reissues, and we're gonna start off with the Mark II. Now, the earliest example of John using the Mark II Aquapus that I could at least find is for Come Rain or Shine with Barbra Streisand in 2014. You can tell by the power jack, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you can tell that that is a Mark II, not a Mark I. But for the Search for Everything World Tour, that's where the Mark II kind of has a claim to fame, at least in being used by John Mayer. The Mark II was the Aquapus that was used for the entire tour for the Search for Everything which is kind of interesting that every other world tour before and since he's gone with the Mark I, but the Mark II was used in that Bradshaw rig that John had for the 2017 The Search for Everything world tour. And of course, we can't leave out Dead & Company. John also was using a Mark II with Dead & Company, mainly in 2017 as well as 2021, the most recent tour at the time of me making this video. Speaking of more recent times, in 2020 at Hotel Cafe with David Ryan Harris, John used a Mark II Aquapus. And in 2021 at Henson Studios during all of those Saw Rock TV performances in promotion for the Saw Rock album being released, John performed Wild Blue and you can actually see the blue LED of a Mark II Aquapus on during that performance. Now, if you guys remember when I briefly touched on the fact that John had a B rig for the Saw Rock era, that B rig featured a Mark II Aquapus. Think of the performances like with Bob Weir and Alexander 23, those quick guest performances that John did, those featured a Mark II Aquapus. 
And also, just about a week ago at the time of me making this video at the Troubadour in Los Angeles in West Hollywood, John took the stage with David Ryan Harris and that pedal board as well featured a Mark II Aquapus. As far as other notable performances with a Mark II, think of Mac Miller's Celebration of Life as well as when John performed with Alec Benjamin. Both of those boards contained a Mark II Aquapus. And that rounds off the Mark II. Pretty much is the remainder of all of the performances and big tours are all covered now. But briefly, I want to touch on the Mark III because John has used the Mark III once, and that is with Shawn Mendes in 2018. That's the only time we've seen him use the Mark III so far, at least at the time of me making this video. And there you guys have it. That is in as much detail as possible that I could do. John Mayer's entire Aquapus history, the different versions that he's used and when with some notable performances thrown in there, just to provide as much detail and depth to this video as I can make for you guys. I absolutely adore this pedal and way huge products in general. So this was kind of just a passion video of mine to make. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. Please leave a comment down below of your favorite performance that featured an Aquapus. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys, your just different examples and stuff like that of this pedal and this slapback effect that John has used. Yes, I'm gonna be doing a deep dive into tones and settings and different specific examples that John has used with Aquapus. So that is all coming to the YouTube channel but I just wanted to share in my excitement of finally having a Mark I in my collection and just doing the deep dive into Mare's history with this pedal. So you guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Anyway, go ahead and click the subscribe button if you like what you see.